Hi, my name is Jason Thomas and I'm the developer of FireJumpers Pro. It's a tactical decision-making training tool specifically designed for wildland firefighting agencies. Now I've already preloaded Waldo Canyon of Colorado and it is generated from real data from ArcGIS uh, and it pulls a lot of information from terrain type, uh, fuel load, density, slope, elevation, uh, fire behavior, and, and a lot more. And so I was able to generate this map and as I zoom in here you'll notice that the map is actually a collection of a whole bunch of very small tiles these are these little tiles here these tiny squares and each one of these tiles is one chain in size or 66 feet or 20 by 20 meters now if you put five by five chains together it creates one hectare in size and so this is where you see this faint blue grid everywhere they, they show the number of hectares now from that standard, that measurement, I was able to translate a lot of things from, let's say, movement speeds, uh, like unit speeds from miles per hour into basically pixels per second, something that this uh, training simulator can use. And so let's just start a little fire over here. And to start a fire, you can click this fire button once, and it activates, and then you just draw anywhere you want to start this fire. Now this fire has, uh, you can notice that it's pushing based on this wind direction and you can change this wind direction by clicking on the arrow and then clicking and dragging and rotating into any direction that you'd like. You see? Now this fire has a very low fire intensity, it's red and uh, to create a, a higher fire intensity, uh, let's do another one right here you actually just start dragging in the same area over and over and as you do that you're increasing the fire and it turns yellow and the more yellow that it becomes the higher the fire intensity is so this will start burning through the trees much faster than this fire here uh, alright so we've got that here and here let's add a unit so let's add a brush truck and to add a brush truck uh, we've got actually here's a, a list of units here these are all the base units and you'll be able to design your own units uh, with their own parameters that you can actually update now for example here's a brush truck and here are its parameters so its movement type is a, of a large vehicle this unit has a hose connection which means that hose teams will be able to connect to this vehicle it has a maximum speed of 60 miles per hour it has an effective range of nine chains, which uh, I'll explain in a minute. Uh, there's water capacity, 400 gallons, uh, water output speed, 60 gallons per minute, a water input speed of 150 gallons per minute, and can only use water. Some units can use retardant and or, or both. Now to add a unit to the map, you click on the unit and you drag it until it snaps right off and then you grab and you place it on the map anywhere here we go now you do get some information from this unit in this little mini menu it has the ability to drive uh, water output which is spraying water water input which is pumping in water and in some cases you can actually uh, pump water uh, you know from a fire hydrant and output and spray water at the same time it also has some information on the terrain tile that it's currently on it's on a road and because and it has zero resistance this road has zero resistance so it has a maximum speed of 60 miles per hour some terrains have a resistance uh, you know if it's going through bushes it's going to drive a little bit more slowly because uh, well because it's bushes and not a road here we go now the nine uh, tiles effective range this is what this is is from this center it's the radius It's nine tiles all the way around here and what that shows is how far that this unit can spray water. Now it's not really spraying water, you know, a, a hectare in, in distance. It just means that even though this unit is technically here, it's more like it could be anywhere in this area. Um, now as it's spraying some water, you'll notice over here that it's spraying on a tree. It shows the fuel load, which is the amount of um, uh, fuel that it has to consume and then you have the fire intensity this is a very low fire intensity and basically this number 
it's subtracted from the fuel load at the top and uh, it shows how long it would actually take to burn that whole tile. Uh, right now because it's spraying on water it's showing the time to extinguish which is about two minutes. Uh, it's spraying at 60 gallons per minute and it's currently at 330 gallons of 400 gallons remaining in its tank which is visualized right here as well. Uh, the water output speed is this blue area and the line thickness here shows that it um, is the water output speed. So if I were to add an engine, let's grab an engine and place it right here. Now you'll notice that the engine has a thicker blue line than the brush truck, which means that this engine, oops, let's bring it a little closer. Yes, yeah, he is spraying at 80 gallons per minute instead of 60 gallons per minute. So it's just kind of small visual cues that kind of help identify, uh, you know, the strength of, the, of your units and how much water capacity that it has. One of the interesting things that it can do as well is as the units come closer together, when it will start to spray on the same tile together, as long as it has a uh, within the same circle area here and so they cooperatively spray on this tile which starts to reduce this time uh, to extinguish that tile uh, a lot faster now here it does take about three minutes to extinguish this tile and so instead of waiting this long we can actually increase the game speed right here and you'll start noticing that this thing is starting to drain a lot faster we can go up to 15 20 in fact, we can go all the way up as much as 100 times the game speed. And so this is where you actually start seeing the fire really starting to move and spread. So we're just going to bring it back to game speed 1 before the fire gets completely out of control here. All right. Now at 100 game speed, these units ran out of water very, very quickly. And so to add more water, we can go to a local source of water. So for example, we can bring this brush truck be close to here we're just going to increase that game speed a little bit and now he's actually pumping some water from this small little lake and you can see this gauge is starting to fill up you can also use a fire hydrant so we can add a fire hydrant let's say right here and we're going to bring this guy right up to the fire hydrant now he's actually pumping water from this fire hydrant meanwhile the fire is still growing in size so you know what let's add uh, a water bomber so let's bring this down here now water bombers and helicopters are have some very interesting calculations working together here so let's bring this water bomber over here and we're going to just put them over the fire now this drop zone is calculated by how much water capacity that this bomber has how fast it's going at its minimum speed and what's its output speed as well as the size of the water spread and so it becomes very accurate on how far or how much water actually gets used so we're going to come over here and we're going to find this lake where is this lake there it is okay so here comes the unit here now what you do is you drag this over to the deep water and you'll see here this pump zone and you can actually drag this after the fact so that you can get it over all deep water now this pump zone is also auto calculated this distance by the water capacity how fast this unit is going uh, the water input speed as well and so when it starts to come down here it will generate it will come down and it will start to gather that water Okay, so then we can come back to this unit. Now you can see the size of this map compared to these units. Right? These maps are quite big. And I think it should have enough to do some good training on. And we can drop some more water. Here we go. 
Now let's see, also, uh, just to quickly go over some of the other options here, in here we have this unit editor. And the unit editor, now uh, we're go these are actually a lot of units from a lot of other uh, players who've already put in, but we're going to go and we're going to grab the, let's see, the dozer. Now here's the dozer unit. You have uh, the ability to rename this unit and this is how you save it. So when you rename the unit to a different name and click save, this is how you create your own new unit. You can update the description, the icon scale, how big, you know, in comparison. It just kind of helps identify maybe some of the bigger or smaller bulldozers. Uh, movement type, you have the ability to go from bipedal, small vehicle, large vehicle, treads, boat, plane, or helicopter. Uh, we have minimum speed and maximum speed. Minimum speed, this is uh, used for planes, uh, so that when you reach the end of the line, the, the line path that it keeps um, flying. Uh, now, this identifies whether it goes on the road only. So, for example, an engine is uh, road only, while a brush truck doesn't have to be on a road. It can actually drive through brush and uh, grass. Uh, indicates whether or not this unit can transport another unit, uh, specifically ground crews, uh, bipedal uh, ground crews. Uh, here's where you can show if it can connect to a hose. So if it has um, a hose connection, like engines and brush trucks, uh, fire hydrants. The effective range, uh, which is two chains, which is the width in which it will cut. It will cut two chains in size as it goes. And then it shows here cutting speed, dozer speed. So here is 80 chains per hour that this dozer can cut. Uh, we don't use any water, but it indicates whether or not you can use water or retardant. Uh, so it doesn't use either. Uh, water tender output. So uh, water tenders, they don't spray water on the fire, but they supply other water units like engines and brush trucks and fill them up. This is their water capacity, their water input speed, and their water output speed. Uh, you also have your hose length here, and this is for the hose team, so uh, depending on how long their hose uh, can be. And that is uh, roughly how the unit editor looks like. Okay. And let's see, we also have a terrain editor. Now this is uh, mostly for ArcGIS gurus, but you can uh, select your different types of terrain. Let's say a tree, and you can design how that tree is gonna look like, as well as uh, its properties. So its density, you know, uh, how does it visually look on, uh, on, the, on the map, uh, the elevation modifier, uh, fire resistance, uh, how well does it resist fire overall? Um, we've got uh, minimum fuel load, maximum fuel load, so that it kind of gives a uh, randomness to it. Uh, fire momentum is how well this fire holds itself and transfers to the next tile. Uh, we've got uh, maximum fire intensity, so this is the highest that it can go, which is 10, which is very, very high. Uh, and then we've got fire behaviors, uh, the way it increments every second uh, based on these particular fire intensities. And then we also have these tiles, which shows how much it resists a particular unit's actions. And so, for example, uh, for cutting speeds, there's a high resistance uh, for cut teams, uh, 36%. So it slows their chains per hour down by 36%. While a dozer would be able to knock these trees down a little bit faster than these cut teams. Uh, then you have movement resistance, which means that uh, as you're moving, walking through trees, you're not getting as much resistance as, let's say, a small vehicle, like, uh, like a 4x4, uh, you know, a little ATV or maybe a, a bike or something like that. Uh, then you got large vehicles, which is 100% resistance, which means that um, brush trucks, anything that are large vehicles, cannot pass through this terrain at all, as well as treads and boats. And that's how these terrains are, are built. 
and uh, yeah roughly that's what we have um, we have a chat editor here uh, that we can use and we also have a built-in microphone that is kind of like a walkie-talkie you press on it you talk and it records your message and it broadcasts it to everybody else in the game room and let's see I think we've got everything we can show different uh, elevation or show the impassable terrain I usually like to have it on just so that I know where the tough spots are where I would need to bring my bulldozer in between each one of these little lines and here we go